The Malampaya Deep Water Gas to Power Project is the largest infrastructure development and investment ever undertaken in the Philippines. It is a landmark deep water project of the Philippine government, the upstream component of which is being developed by Shell Philippines Exploration BV, or SPECS. When completed, it will deliver gas to generate 2,700 megawatts of electricity, which will meet some 30% of the Luzon area's power demand. First gas is planned for delivery in October 2001, with first sales in January 2002. Its roots date back to 1990, when Spex acquired a 50% participating interest in SC38. Spex subsequently discovered the Malampaya field in 1992, which was later confirmed directly linked to the Camago culmination. Lying more than 3,000 meters below sea level, the development of Malampaya is one of the most challenging deep water developments in the world. A further challenge was the search for a gas market necessary for SPECS to pursue development of the project. In January 1998, six years after the Malampaya discovery, major commercial agreements were presented to then-President Fidel Ramos in El Nido, Palawan. On May 18 the same year, the gas sales and purchase agreements were signed at the Malacanang Palace. Groundbreaking at the concrete gravity structure site took place just a week after. Also in 1998, Shell acquired Occidental's remaining interest in service contract 38, and a new Philippine president was elected. Since then, development of the Malampaya Natural Gas Project has proceeded at top speed. From SPEC's new headquarters in Alabang, Manila, dedicated management and staff have started adopting a can-do, must-do, will-do attitude, cultivating the shared values necessary to successfully put the project together. The upstream development consists of extensive gas reserves located under the seabed, more than 820 meters below sea level. From a series of wells, the gas is directed some 30 kilometers from the wellheads via seabed manifolds and flow lines to a production platform anchored to the sea floor some 43 meters below sea level. Located 504 kilometers from Luzon, the production platform is composed of two parts, the concrete gravity structure or CGS and the top sides. There, the gas will undergo initial processing prior to being pumped through the pipeline to the onshore gas plant in Batangas. Both SPEX and the Philippine government recognize the importance of the Malampaya project, not just in economic terms, but also in its ability to facilitate a number of important and very necessary environmental and social benefits. SPEX has, as one of its key operational viewpoints, the dedication to ensure the Malampaya project contributes in a practical way to helping Filipinos build a better way of life. Essentially, sustainable development in action. One undertaking is the Subic Bay Bat Habitat Restoration Project, which aims to protect the world's largest fruit bats that are under threat. This is largely due to degraded forests and overhunting of the bats by the local populace for food and sport. To create the CGS construction facility, around 2,200 trees had to be removed from an already degraded area. SPEX, as part of its environmental compliance certificate, undertook to plant 10 new trees for each one removed. By planting 22,000 fruit trees in the Subic area, it is hoped that the bats will no longer need to fly long distances for food, making them much less vulnerable. Bats, it must be noted, also play a key role in forest pollination and regrowth. As part of the project, local people are being educated on the importance of the bats, with some being trained to take care of them. Other projects include community skills training programs aimed at helping local communities to become more self-reliant and sustainable in the long term. 
where community management skills, cooperative building, agriculture, and aquaculture skills and the improvement of basic services are all part of the plan. Schooling and infrastructure development are also most important. Likewise, local people are being given preferential employment at the construction site, providing training to enable the people to handle the work required. Other similar programs in nearby regions are also planned. Various components of the project are being fabricated across the Southeast Asian region. The CGS is being constructed at Green Beach, Subic Bay in the Philippines. Brown and Root Energy Services, platform designers and contractors to the project, has subcontracted the engineering, procurement construction, and installation of the CGS to John Holland, Arab Energy, and Van Oord ACZ, together operating as the Malampaya CGS Alliance. The subcontract to fabricate the topsides, together with its transport frame, was awarded to Sembawang Marine and Offshore Engineering at its port facility north of Singapore. The topsides will be installed on the CGS using the float-over method. Pipeline manufacturers are NKK and NSC of Japan at the company's Fukuyama Pipe Mill. Protective anti-corrosion pipeline coating is being carried out by Bredero Price International Pipe Coaters at their plant in Kuantan, Malaysia. Another important element of the project is the construction of a manifold designed to operate under deep sea pressures and conditions when placed on the sea floor near the wellheads. To facilitate this aspect of the project, Specs contracted Cooper Cameron in Singapore to build a positioning template and is manufacturing the manifold for installation. Contracts were signed with specs for the design, procurement, fabrication, installation, and commissioning of the Malampaya platform, together with the subsea components of the project in August 1998. Also within the year, acquisition and refitting of the Atwood Falcon destined to drill additional wells on the seafloor were undertaken. Five wells will be drilled initially, commencing in 2000 to ensure deliverability for its first commercial gas sales on 1st of January 2002. The drilling of the subsequent four wells is planned for 2009 and may involve a second manifold near the Camago area. Site clearing for the CGS commenced in September 1998, while actual construction commenced in April 1999. The target installation date on the seabed is in September 2000. The CGS has three special features. One is that it is the first CGS in the world to be placed on a pre-prepared foundation to accommodate the unevenness of the seabed. The second is that the CGS is being constructed to resist earthquake loadings. And the third is that it will be capable of being refloated at the end of its operational life for environmentally responsible decommissioning. By July 1999, the CGS is well underway, with storage and ballast cells well defined. When completed, the CGS will contain some 77,000 tons of concrete, 8,300 tons of reinforcing steel, and 600 tons of pre-stressing steel strands. By August, the first of the four legs was under construction, and by October, the first leg was virtually complete, with the second leg underway. Storage cell construction was also much further advanced. The construction of a CGS is highly labor-intensive, where the skills of people cannot easily be replaced by machines and technology. SPECS gives first priority in recruitment of its labor force to recruiting people from the nearby area, providing them with skills training both for the project and their future. They wanted to utilize 
more of uh, one firstly in terms of uh, materials here in the Philippines and secondly uh, the manpower that is required. At the Sembawang Yard in Singapore on the 27th of May 1999, first steel was cut ahead of schedule for the construction of the Malampaya platform topsides. Just four weeks later, the three decks are laid out in the yard with work fully underway. Each level is fabricated separately and when completed will be stacked to make the complete platform. Cutting, welding, grinding and finishing of every aspect requires real attention to detail. Steel columns like this are used to separate each of the three decks and must be finished to exacting standards. All welds within the topside's construction are also tested for adherence to the tight specifications. On the construction front, striking steel ahead of schedule has enabled constant progress to be maintained. In fact, the topsides are proceeding in excess of two weeks ahead of schedule, with the three decks nearing completion. By the end of October, the basic construction work on all three decks was complete. Work on the design and construction of living quarters, capable of housing a crew of 44, is also underway. The living quarters incorporate many features that support low maintenance and environmental friendliness. The external cladding will be stainless steel, eliminating painting, and an aluminum helideck will reduce weight. In Japan, at the NKK pipe mill in Fukuyama, pipeline manufacture was well underway by July 1999. After lifting and handling tags are welded to the sheet steel, the bending, forming, rolling and welding of the pipe is an automatic process. As each pipe section is completed, all seams are pressure tested, and pipes are loaded into a lathe for pipe and chamfering, a little like sharpening a pencil except on a much grander scale. As the pipes are completed, they are loaded onto specially built trailers for transport to the NKK pipe laydown area and wharf before being loaded out aboard ship for the Bredero Price Pipeline Coating Plant at Kuantan, Malaysia. At Bredero Price, pipes are offloaded and transported into the plant for a series of operations designed to provide the pipeline with a long and trouble-free, corrosion-resistant life. The first internal and external coatings of pipe for the gas export pipeline was in late March 1999. Pipes are first heated to make them completely dry before both exteriors and interiors are shot blasted. Internally, pipes are coated with 65 microns of epoxy resin paint. Externally, a primer coating is first applied before wrapping in fiberglass and coating with 5.5 millimeters of asphalt enamel. For maximum durability, each pipe is then enclosed in a wire cage and sprayed with a 40 millimeter thick coat of concrete, having a density of 2,250 kilograms per cubic meter. A further safety and maximum life feature is a fitting of aluminum anodes to every one to six pipes. The last step in the process is the cleaning of pipe ends to ensure a clean, accurate weld. All pipe manufacture and coating was nearing completion at the end of October, one month ahead of schedule. Another key aspect of the project is the manufacture of a subsea manifold, valves, and associated pipeline components at Cooper Cameron in Singapore. By July 1999, the layout of the template for the subsea installation was complete, with work proceeding on the valves and manifold, which will be installed on the seafloor at a depth of 820 meters. As with all aspects of the project, accuracy and attention to detail is paramount. By October, Construction is well on schedule, with many of the subsea components ready for assembly into the template when it is laid on the sea floor.
In the period from June to October 1999, a number of other activities also took place. The Highland Rover ROV was deployed. With the ship on station, underwater survey work of the pipeline route has commenced to acquire a precise topography of the seabed. By June 1999, site preparation was also well underway at the new Tabangao onshore gas plant, where the gas will undergo final processing prior to delivery to customers. A report on a project of this magnitude would not be complete without a survey of the progress being made by the customers in the construction of power generation plants which will utilize the Malampaya gas. In June 1999, the new Santa Rita power plant was nearing completion. At the end of October, it has virtually been completed, ready for commissioning. Site excavations for the Ilihan power plant a third plan to benefit from the natural gas were underway in June. By the end of October, basic infrastructure development is in place. By the end of October 1999, the Malampaya project is running ahead of schedule, a tribute to the planning, management, and dedication of everyone involved. Also, by the end of October, negotiations for Texaco to acquire 45% of the project have been completed. The sale concluded on the 5th of November, 1999. Without doubt, the Malampaya project is extremely important for the Philippines and its people. Shell Philippines Exploration BV is proud of its involvement and the contributions that are ongoing to making the lives of all Filipinos more rewarding.